Hi, it's the 1st of October 2019. Um, it's turned quite stormy and rainy and we've harvested almost everything now. I've been a bit busy so I haven't made a record of it, but this is a catch-up. The sweet peppers come indoors. It's got quite a lot of peppers, they're not the hugest. I probably didn't feed it enough in its little pot. But it has done a whole lot better than the sweet pepper I planted out in the open ground. These are some tomatoes from the allotment. They're getting this brown back thing, blight, whatever it is. But we had quite a few tomatoes nonetheless. This is the remains of the beans drying. These are little speckly ones, they look like that. These are some chickpeas. I have harvested some chickpeas, but they're taking a long time to ripen and you never know whether there's actually anything in the pod. Over here are some leftovers. Most of those have already been jarred up. And this is the last pyramid. I had two pyramids of these. I think they're called Ely, they're pole beans. I left them out a bit too long because I was too busy. And what happens is they swell up again. See, they dry out, or the, the, the shells go a bit papery. And then it rains and they swell up again because the shells have become porous and they lose their colour. But I expect they'll be okay. I'll try them. The thing is, they lose their colour anyway once you soak them and cook them up. But they do look so pretty with their lovely cranberry colour. These are the beans from the other Ely pyramid that I harvested first before they got too wet. Still a few pink ones in there, but look at that. That's a large jar of beans from just six seeds planted in a pyramid. That's a pretty good return, I'd say. I made a lot of jam. I stewed some plums and some apple and apricots. I had a lot of apricots this year. And that's my bean shelf full up. Well, the one on the right is lentils, which I bought, but the rest are all from the garden. I have found that since I started growing a whole lot more beans, I have been getting little beetles. They may be weevils or some other beetle, I don't know. But you see them when you put the beans in the jar and then you go back and look at the jar and there are little holes in the beans and there are little brown, dusty things lying in the bottom. There, you can see some little holes in those. I'll tip them out and see what we can see. That's the dog making a nest on the remaining potatoes in the box. I don't know how he can think that's comfortable. We've harvested all the potatoes and these are the remains we're taking up into the attic because finally it's turned cold enough to put them there. It was a pretty good potato crop. Um, the rats didn't gnaw too many and although a lot of them have holes, they're huge and they should last. A lot of them should last anyway. So, here's the little beetles. Are they dead? Are they still alive? If they're weevils, they should have pointy snouts. See how tiny they are. There, I've zoomed in on them and you can see the beautiful little discs of skin that each one has cut out before it could make its exit from the bean. And I think they do have little pointy snouts. Look at that one. That seems to be a point. I don't know. They're, they're so small. It's really hard. I have to say, I grew up in a time when food was not as plentiful as it is now in the Western world, where people are throwing away everything just because it's got a little brown spot on it or because it's one day over its due date or they've already had one meal from it and they can't be bothered to finish the rest. Anyway, I don't intend to throw away any beans just because they've got holes in them, although I might draw the line at eating the weevils as well. I had a lot of little cucumbers. Unfortunately, they are slightly bitter and Chris doesn't like them. I don't mind the slight bitterness. Um, and these are the exploding cucumbers. I picked some before they got too big. They're unremarkable, I have to say. I did put some slices in a quiche, but I had to leave the other half without any for Chris because he didn't want any. They're a bit like slices of courgette, I suppose, but yeah, totally unremarkable. If you want to grow something rambling that takes over large areas of your garden, 
I wouldn't bother with exploding cucumber, I'd go for the Styrian pumpkin every time. The Styrian pumpkins did very well. I've already hacked up some of them. Oh. Dog doesn't like the noise. <laughs> I've finished now. I'm going to open it up. There they are, lovely little seeds. I had four plants and each one had about four pumpkins, I think, so that's quite a lot of pumpkins to go. And that's the yield from four pumpkins, so this is what you get from one seed. Pretty good return, eh? Two jars of pumpkin seeds, they're really sweet and tasty. quite labour intensive as you can see. But you know what? I don't mind labour intensive. I enjoy doing this sort of thing, harvesting little bits and pieces, beans and seeds and drying them and storing them away for later. It gives a connection to nature that you don't have when you go to the supermarket and buy stuff wrapped in plastic off the shelf. And I think we're going to all have to learn to do a lot more of this sort of thing in the future and spend less time doing other things which you could also consider labour intensive. You know, you can spend hours playing a video game. What have you got to show for it? If you can spend hours maybe watching a movie and shelling beans at the same time, then you've got something to show for it. So I'll leave you now. See you again later. Bye.